please help me welcome Sean Brenches, a distinguished alum from the Saunders College of Business. I don't think it was Saunders at that time, but it was College of Business. Thank you for allowing me to join your class. My name is Sean Bratches, and uh, I'm an alumnus of RIT. I spent uh, 28 years at ESPN. Um, I finished my career as Executive Vice President of Sales and Marketing. I ran the entire business side of, of the company. So everything from consumer marketing, consumer products, um, all the advertising, sponsorship, revenue. I had a wonderful career at ESPN and uh, I left there a few years ago. Liberty Media owns things like Live Nation, Ticketmaster, acquired Formula One and reached out and asked me to go run the business side of Formula One. As it relates to ESPN, um, one of the more, I, I would say, defining moments in terms of how we positioned the brand and marketed the service was um, in some respects a uh, fortuitous mistake. You know, most marketing campaigns that you engage an agency or develop internally to create last for a finite period of time, three months, six months, you know, during a, you know, a, a sports season as an example. What we did, we went to widen and, and we said that we wanted to create a campaign around Sports Center and really develop a personality around that that we could hang our hat on. We wanted to have a campaign that you know elevated three primary notions. Is is one is we wanted to communicate to fans that uh, we take sports very seriously, but we don't take ourselves seriously. Um, we wanted to position Bristol, Connecticut, uh, where for ESPN was located, is located, uh, as the center of the sports universe. And thirdly, we wanted to make sure that fans didn't perceive ESPN as this big conglomerate or a network. We wanted them to perceive us as another fan, so one fan talking to another fan. If you are becoming the person in charge of creating the brand, how important is it to have some expertise or knowledge of the product before starting? In my case, I didn't have experience with Formula One per se, but I had experience marketing sport my entire career. You know, if you look at my career at ESPN, we had 65 different sports that we televised um, across our myriad platforms. I had people in my marketing group that were, you know, very specifically tied to college football or to the NFL or to Major League Baseball or whatever the sport might be. And what was interesting to me, you know, I had lead boots on and I was walking across the bottom of that lake and learned about the sport. But, um, you know, you didn't need to know uh, about the flux capacitor, I'm making a joke, uh, but you, you didn't need to know about, you know, the, the gearbox and, and, you know, the data and, you know, and downforce and things like that to, uh, you know, to market the sport effectively and grow the sport and kind of, you know, look at what the North Stars were and drive towards that. The Formula One community would come up to me. They would say that the best thing that happened to Formula One is that they brought someone in who wasn't a Formula One fan, who could, you know, take their helicopter up, look at it holistically, didn't have, uh, you know, perceptions uh, on, a, on a coming in basis. So I think it can work both ways, but with my background, it actually ended up working out famously, um, not having a, an ingrained understanding of uh, not only motorsport, but, but Formula One, but having that kind of that broader aura around it.